Morning, Monica. Have a seat. Thank you. I'm Des Dillard. I'm the originator of the Thinkers 50 concept. Um, I work very closely with Stuart Craner, who was the sort of second originator of the, of the concept. I'm Stuart Craner. Really, I'm, I'm the brains. I say this in all modesty. Uh, I'm the brains behind the Thinkers 50. Over the last 20 years, I've been, I've been working with uh, someone called Des Dillard. And Des has fulfilled a great role in kind of administration, the kind of the minor bureaucracy that you get in any organisation. But I've always been guiding the vision of, of the company and its development into the global branding powerhouse it, it now is. The way I like to think of it is, you know, I'm, I'm the vision, really. I'm, I'm the one with the, with the ideas. Stuart's very good. If you give him a task, he's very good at getting on with it. Um, he's got quite a fragile ego. So you have to be quite careful. So I, I try to make him feel part of it. I try to make him think sometimes, you know, that, that some of the ideas are his ideas. And, um, you know, usually it works. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have a very good, close working relationship. And it, 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 you know, we've worked together for 25 years. And our relationship's always been built on collaboration, honest exchanges of ideas, and of course, a, a commitment to uh, beer and uh, talking nonsense in bars. People always ask us about how the Thinkers 50 is uh, created and how we keep, keep on top of all the people we, we feature in, in the ranking and the awards and the radar, etc. Et the answer is we spend a lot of time sitting in pubs, drinking beer, talking about the ideas and sharing the information we've gathered. It's recent times when people talk about, you know, the, having office space and moving around and being all fluid. I mean, we've been hot desking from pub to pub in London for a long time. We've been wet desking. <laughs> Initially, when we came up with the idea for Thinkers 50, it was a, a journalistic exercise. We saw the success that Business Week and then subsequently the Financial Times were having with their business school rankings. And we thought, OK, you know, ranking, people like rankings. So that really was what was driving that first Thinkers 50 ranking. That and the fact that we knew that there were so many books coming out that people couldn't keep up. We could see an opportunity to actually perform a service to the managers of the world by providing some sort of a filter so that they would be able to know which ideas were worth looking at. So it was a consumer guide to that extent. But at the same time, obviously, it was a competitive endeavour as far as the actual thinkers were concerned. We were genuinely surprised and delighted by the reaction that people were, seemed to be interested. Um, the first ranking made the front page of a, of a UK newspaper. When CK Prahlad was number one, it was on the front page of the Times of India. And there was lots of global interest. And each time we did it, we got more interest. And then from that, we created the Thinkers 50 radar of up and coming thinkers. Then we created the Thinkers 50 Awards. We created the Thinkers 50 Hall of Fame. And we created an event every, every two years. And, and that's why it's been um, particularly satisfying. Yeah, it's funny talking about the, the history of the Thinkers 50, because really we started and it was just me and you, two men. Yeah. And, th and then I got a dog and that, that changed things completely. <laughs> <laughs> two, two men and a dog was a, a force to be reckoned with, obviously. Was that employee number three? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm very pleased that my dog has, has appeared in many webinars to global audiences, as he is often in my office asleep behind me. Um, I'm more of a dog lover than, than Des is. For him to get a dog, it's, it made sense from that point of view, because, you know, he'd have someone to go to the pub with. Um, when I'm not around, obviously, I, you know, I, I try, I do what I can to be his friend. You know, as best I can. Um, so when the dog arrived, you know, for me it was a distraction. I'm more of a kind of Doctor Doolittle sort of person. I'm able to communicate with them, and Des, for one reason or another, has has got his mental scars from his relationship with animals in the past. Okay, okay. okay. Hey, do it again. Now. Oh, why should I have all the fun, though? You, you throwing a stick? No, you, you're all right. You're all right. You, you, you're fine. You sure? You, you. I derive a huge amount of happiness from throwing a stick for a dog. You should try it. Well. It was obvious what was going to happen. I mean, I, I, I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to throw the stick. I, I've read Marshall Goldsmith said it's a kind of Buddhist karma. If you throw a stick for a dog and it brings it back, oneness with nature, you should try it. OK, well, how do you, you start Give it, it a go. I mean, you, big throw, big boy's throw. Obviously, you know, I have, I have more range if I'm throwing a stick than Stuart would have. So, you know, I was going to throw it further into the future than the dog could handle. Where did he go? 
sort of over there. Yeah, I'll be back in a minute, I'm sure. No, I, I had no grudge against the dog. Um, I can't see the dog now. I can't see the stick or the dog. I don't think he's coming back. What kind of throw was it anyway? Wasn't it a proper... You said... I just throw it. No, throw no, it as no. far as you can, you I said. meant I more natural, it. more natural. No. I give you simple jobs to do. No, I told like you. throwing I, a I stick for you, a dog. I didn't want to throw the stick. Yeah, there was an element, there was an element too, of, of Stuart and the dog trying to gang up on me. What were I, don't know why, I don't know why I gave you that stick. No. That was the dog's favourite stick as well. That's my favourite dog. You see, you, you, there are situations where having, a, having a, a, an, an animal as part of your organisation can work. I mean, Dory Clark's cat, that, work, that seems to work very well. They seem to have a good understanding. I don't know whether the cat's actually on the board at Dory's company. Stuart, she wanted the dog to be the chairman of the company at one point, which wasn't going to work. Well, oh, congratulations. Losing a family pet, great. What do I tell the children? Tell them to get what another dog. What do I tell the grandchildren? Tell, tell them we get another dog. I will be asking, questioning whether, we, we, whether we, we try to increase the diversity in the organisation and go with possibly another mammal. We could even go to a reptile. Iguanas are quite quiet. <laughs> <laughs> This gala is going to be very special for a number of reasons. The fact that it's our 20th anniversary, 20 years since we published the very first Thinkers 50 Global Ranking, so that obviously that makes it special. Also, it will be the first ever all virtual Thinkers 50 gala, which brings challenges, but it also brings new opportunities. The great thing is people can join us from anywhere in the world. It democratises the experience. Their voices will be heard, you know, you can join in with the, the chat function, you can put your question to the great thinker who's up on the stage. So I think that's very powerful. And a very important role for the Thinkers 50 is to share knowledge and is to share access to all the great thinkers in our community. And that's something we're really uh, keen to emphasise and develop in the years ahead.